Hey there, it's Mark Gomes again with another video cast as part of the Los Angeles LD Micro Conference series. Before we kick in, I want to remind you to check me out at Mark Gomes Stocks, two S's in the middle, dot wordpress.com and consider downloading the WordPress app. Excellent application. Uh, you can get into the conversation much more easily there and uh, heck of a conversation has been going on. We've uh, got a nice group of researchers collaborating together and helping to make the research of high quality. We're having a great year because of it as you can tell by the title of our most recent article. Uh, before we move any further, uh, opening disclosure here, uh, please pause the video and read this opening disclosure and then when you're done with that, press pause down here, Let's see where we got it, here we go, and read this one as well or just go to the website where you can see these disclosures, very important, okay, and I'll move this down so you can read the rest, okay, so with that said, those are the disclosures. Okay. And um, before I kick into this today's content, I want to remind you that uh, I'm doing a special report right now on Smith Micro, and that special report analyzes how well they are doing with their rollout of Safe and Found at Sprint. That's their Safe Path product, branded as Safe and Found at Sprint. It's um, been going very well from what I've gathered but now we're doing a boots on the ground research campaign and all of you are invited to participate in it and anybody who does will get an early look at least one week at the special report that I write so you're gonna know if things are going well or things are going poorly and I'm taking everybody's data points and rolling them up into one comprehensive report about how things are going across the country with Sprint's Smith Micro rollout. And just look at the directions here is all you have to do. Again, if you go to the major update, there it is on my blog site. If you click here, you'll come to this part of the report and then you can click here. If you just follow these instructions, all you have to do is call three stores, ask three questions, Click here, give me your responses, and you will get the next special report for free and at least one week before the general public gets to see it. Okay, so um, with that said, let's move on to today's subject. I'm going to talk a little about this article that came out regarding Helios and Matheson. Not exactly LD Micro um, content because uh, they weren't at LD Micro, uh, but they've been to this conference, and this is some content that came out, of course. Uh, MoviePass is a still a hot topic. So I wanted to analyze what was said here, and you know, folks might be a little surprised. Uh, everybody has seen me as the uh, Helios basher, the MoviePass basher over the last several months. Uh, most of those people that feel that way don't recall that I was actually the first well-known analyst to come out and um, you know discover MoviePass and Helios back when it was three dollars uh, back here in September put out that CEO interview I was bullish on the story um, that they had given and I said hey you know they put a work a lot of work into this story and if they execute this is gonna this should be a really great stock um, the thing took on a life of its own went well beyond the price target I had in mind and um, you know, along that way, what I found was that the plan that they laid out was not playing out the way that they portrayed it. And that's what started to get me negative on the company and the stock. Okay. Um, anybody that hasn't read my stuff doesn't understand that. Anybody that doesn't know that I was originally a bull on this story uh, doesn't necessarily know that I'm neutral on. The story, a neutral observer, I should say. I'm unbiased. I don't any, own any of the stock. I'm not short any of the stock. I'm just here to report on the stock because a lot of people got in early uh, because of me. I got a lot of people out, and it's just a very interesting story. It's a great education on stocks and what makes them move. And as you, 
A lot of you have found out, some of you painfully, um, that having a great story doesn't make a great stock. The stock's down 99% um, from its high. And, uh, you know, obviously, I don't want to touch a nerve there. I just want to help folks understand what's going on there, whether you're a bull or a bear. What really matters most is being right. Okay. So, in that regard, looking at this article here by Plato Management, I've got to say, did a really good job. Um, the facts, I'm going to walk through some of them here. Um, they're actually a little more bearish than I am in terms of the facts, but their conclusions are very bullish. And um, I disagree with that conclusion, at least in the short term. I'm the kind of person that watches as things unfold and make my judgment as we go along. And right now, my biggest problem with the company is uh, they still have a huge cash burn, like $20 million a month. They need to continue um, printing shares out to the public, which is what's been killing the stock, is that dilution. They're continuing to dilute the stock on a week-to-week, -week, month to month basis, okay? And until that slows down, which I think will happen probably in the back half of July, I think it's very, um, let's call it uh, perilous to get involved in the stock. And I've been saying that, uh, I've been negative on the stock since it was 12, but I've been saying this in particular about the summer blockbuster season since the stock was two. And now here we are in the 30 cent range and I'm still saying that until mid-July, this is a very dangerous stock to own because of the number of shares the company is selling. After that, I think we get a tradable bounce. And that gives us enough time, that buys us enough time to see if the utilization rate continues to improve, if some of the things that they're trying to accomplish improve. And um, most importantly, if they start to gain some power in the industry that will allow them to act on the original plan that they had. And, and this is the real problem here is until they get real market power, they will not be able to succeed at what they're trying to become. Okay, I think they can see right, succeed right now if they scale the company down and become more of a niche player with uh, tertiary theaters and tertiary content. Uh, I think they can do that at any time. And that's why I don't think this company will go bankrupt because if we get to a certain point, they'll be able to scale back, retreat, and survive. All right. So that gives some hope to investors as well where bankruptcy, I, I don't think, is – um, it's not going to be necessary. If it happens, it'll be because these guys were too aggressive for too long, and that's up to them. So we'll find out. All right. So um, that's where I stand on this. Um, I'm definitely in a void until mid-July when the summer blockbusters subside. So let's uh, talk about some of the content we had in this article here. So the first thing that comes to mind, um, the – uh, Plato Management estimated that the May cash burn was 20.6 million and perhaps 5 million less. You can read the article to find out why. So that puts them in the 15.6 to 20.6 cash burn for the month of May. My estimate, 17.3. So we're dead in line. And by the way, you can see my movie pass model if you read some of my articles uh, at the blog site that I introduced earlier in this video cast you'll be able to find my movie pass model there okay so um, we agree on cash burn number two cash burn until year end uh, Plato management's estimating 146 million I'm only estimating 105 okay they're bullish I'm bearish but their numbers are more bearish than mine uh, it's just a matter of opinion on how things conclude okay and um, you know I'll tell you by the way I believe that the conclusions of Plato management, you know, because they're valuation based, that's where the problem lies, okay? I can go so far as to agree that the valuation is low without actually agreeing, but let's for the sake of argument say that I do. It doesn't change the fact that they have tons of dilution still to come for another month or so, okay? And for those of you who know uh, that I'm also I'm bullish on Smith Micro, that's my top pick right now. Uh, while that company had dilution going on, they couldn't start moving in the right direction. I actually uh, got caught with some of the stock from 340 all the way down to 140. 
because of that, okay? Um, and now it made quite a bit of money on the way back up, but you had to wait until the dilution settled down. We're not quite there with this one yet. So that's the real difference in opinion between Plato Management and myself at this point. As far as the valuation goes, well, I'm going to withhold judgment until we have the dilution issue resolved, um, at least in the interim in July. So moving on, um, the next data point uh, out that I'll bring up, Plato Management doesn't really discuss, at least not that I found in there, 2019. Okay. The problem that I have with Helios at this point in time is that my current expectation based on management's most recent conversations, um, Ted Farnsworth in particular had talked about you know, 2019, they need to continue doing a lot of work and they will require in my estimation at least one or two hundred million dollars in addition to the one to two hundred million dollars that they burn this year. Okay, and, and maybe in excess of 200 million. So that's a big problem, all right, um, in terms of the dilution continuing once we get to the holiday uh, movie season in November. So we get a tradable bounce perhaps in late July, August, September, maybe even October, but then we're back to that dilution kick starting in November when the late year blockbusters come out. Okay. Uh, and then we have to worry about 2019 with another big cash burn year coming up, potentially. Okay, uh, we need to see what the company does between now and then uh, to find out. Hopefully, by this time in July, they'll come out and give us some guidance that says that they're cutting back on that burn rate a little bit more um, beyond some of the measures that they put in place already, which are one-time events. They need some more one-time events, or they need something permanent in terms of utilization rate declining. Uh, moving on, so a few facts here uh, which Plato and I will not disagree with. Um, the ATM, uh, May 15th, there was about one week's time in the mid-May time frame where they raised 15.4 million. That means they sold 15.4 million dollars worth of their own stock in about one week's time. Now, you know, the interesting thing about that, and by the way, they from um, from that date, from May 15th, let's say May 16th until June 4th, they raised another 34.7 million by issuing 64 million shares at 54 cents. Okay, um, they're issuing shares at a dramatic rate. You can do the math on 50 on 64 million shares um, divided into uh, May 16th through June 4th. So we're talking uh, 15 plus 4, 19 days divided into 64 million shares. And you can do the math on how many million shares they were dishing out onto the public um, every day, killing the stock, of course. You can see in the chart exactly what that does, um, of course. So, um, you know, so the question there is, you know, I, at LD Micro, I spoke to many companies, and some of them I felt should have raised money to really press their sales and marketing efforts forward because they had a good product, a good strategy, good profitability on the product, but refused to because they didn't like where their stock price was. Now, you have to think that Helios doesn't like where their stock price is and didn't like where it was when it was 54 cents, and they still issued 64 million shares at that price. Something to consider there. Just think about it. Of course, I know they needed the money, but that sparks that sniffs of desperation, right? If they needed the money and had to raise it at 54 cents, it's because nobody else was willing to give them more than 54 cents. Think about it, okay? Now, um, next, Plato Management and I need to raise by year end. Plato Management says six, that they need to raise $46.6 .6 million between now and year end, okay? I think it's less. I don't think they need to raise so much. Um, looking at the balance sheet and the cash burn, um, my numbers in particular, my numbers are lower than Plato Management's. And as a result, I only think they maybe need to raise another 28 mil. So maybe we get to that middle of July. And like I said, we've got, you know, August, September, October. It's not until November, December that they really, you know, need to raise a bit more, um, you know, accelerate the cash raise. 
So that's where I talk about that trade will bounce coming maybe a month from now once they are done pressuring the stock from where they are, where it is right now. Could be wrong. Could start happening earlier. People do things in anticipation. We'll find out. Okay. Um, so point number eight here out of ten that I'll make. Um, the article makes no address. Doesn't account for the fact that we're currently at about 3 million subscribers for MoviePass. Okay, that's about one and a half, less than one and a half percent penetration of all U.S. moviegoers. Uh, I'm here in Hollywood right now. As we speak, I am in Hollywood um, and just came back from some people that are from the industry, producers, um, directors, actors. Uh, I'm, I'm meeting a lot of people through my friends that are out here in L.A. I'm talking to them about MoviePass, which they are very familiar with, and asking them how much, how many moviegoers they need to sign up to have some real power in Hollywood, over the theaters, over the studios. And the numbers were much higher. You know, they have to get at least 10, 20, 30 percent of the movie going public signed up before they can wield any real power. And so that's real problematic because they're only at one and a half percent. So at a bare minimum, they're only a sixth or a seventh of the way to where they need to get to. And in the process of adding those new subscribers, new subscribers, new subscribers until they can start forcing the theaters and studios to give them a cut, they're going to continue burning 100, 200, 300 million dollars a year. Okay, uh, and we're coming up on a year soon. They'll be at about two percent after one year. So it could take them another four years to get up to ten percent, the bare minimum, to wield some power in the marketplace. That's a problem. Okay, uh, the other problem is that if they don't continue to just sign the infrequent moviegoers, they're gonna continue to have a high utilization rate no matter what processes they put in place because there are 35 million people in this country that go to more than one and a half movies a month and when you put a movie pass in their hands they go to three okay in order for movie pass to be profitable they need to get that utilization number down to 0.7 or so and it's currently two point something and these frequent moviegoers go to three now if you think about renewals okay you're going to lose some customers, right? And you're going to keep some customers. Who do you think is going to be getting rid of their movie pass? The person that goes to three movies a month or the person that goes to 0.7? Common sense. Their renewal rate is going to have infrequent moviegoers leaving the program, even as more and more of the 35 million frequent moviegoers in the United States find out about the program. I told a lot. Of, I talked to a lot of folks over here, and a lot of people here in LA go to the movies on a regular basis. I'm talking like every other day, and a lot of them don't even have a movie pass yet. So as word continues to get out, it's the frequent moviegoers that are more likely to sign up. And again, 35 million of them—that's 15% of the U.S. movie-going public. That's a problem because. MoviePass cannot be profitable with those people without jacking the price way up and scaring away everybody else and getting rid of what made the whole story famous in the first place. Okay, so that's point number eight. Point number nine, uh, Plato Management talks about there being 160 million shares outstanding. I have no problem with that. Like I said, almost all of the facts of this matter, fact number one, two, three, four, five, I mean, there's really no disagreement. In fact, um, there is nothing in my numbers that are more bearish than theirs. All of my numbers are more bullish than theirs from a number standpoint. Okay, from a strategic and profitability standpoint, that's where we fall apart. Okay, uh, the dilution is the main issue, not whether or not they're going to succeed. The dilution to try to get there. Okay, so that's a problem. Um, so you know the issue that I have with point number nine is. It's not about how many shares are outstanding right now. It's about how many shares they continue to pour onto the market. Okay. Once that slows down in mid-July, then we can have another conversation. Right. So final point number ten. We can scale down when we talk about valuation in this article. 
and there is a discussion about dilution there. I mean, it's a very good article, by the way, very good. Um, so here we go. And if you read this, you know, there's a discussion about what each subscriber should be worth. And there's some assumptions around that, like this, the escalating profit margin per subscriber over five years. So the problem I have with that is there's no reason to believe that their profit margin per subscriber is going to move up to 35% over a five year span. And it comes back to what I said about there being 35 million frequent moviegoers. Now, if you went to three movies per month, and maybe you do, if you go to three movies a month, ask yourself, do I have a movie pass? And the answer should be yes. If you don't have a movie pass, you should get one because you'll be paying $10 a month to go to those three movies, correct? If that's correct, if that makes sense to you, then there are 35 million people in this country that should be signing up for movie pass and the average person in that cohort goes to three movies per month. There's no way. And in fact, you can, don't take my word for it. Go and ask the company. Ask MoviePass if they can be profitable on customers that are going to three movies a month. And if they say yes, ask them to explain it. And if it makes sense to you, come back and let me know. All right, because I've had that discussion. And there's no way they can be profitable on customers going to three movies a month. They accept the, the fact that they have to have some customers like that and are counting on the average being somewhere around one per month. That's what they're counting on. The problem is, is it's never going to get there because the frequent moviegoers are going to be the ones that continue to sign up and the infrequent ones are going to be the ones most likely to non-renew. It's only common sense and that's exactly why the utilization rate has not dropped for anything except for MoviePass making rule changes. Okay? Other than that, it has stayed persistently over two per month uh, on an average month and I think once again, once we get into July, August, that will settle down for a few months until it and then uh, bounce back again later in the year. Okay, so that's it. All right, that's my take on this situation. Uh, I'm not saying that the company is not going to succeed. I'm not saying that the company is going uh, bankrupt. I certainly don't believe the latter at this point in time, but I do have skepticism around their ability to succeed on the strategy that they are embarked upon right now because of the frequent moviegoer um, cohort being 35 million uh, within the United States. Okay, um, But we do have a possible tradable bounce coming as the dilution settles down and again the dilution is the main reason that the stock will continue to be pressured regardless of the valuation as we found out with Smith Micro and you found out in dozens of examples Every year in the stock market, uh, heavy dilution will hurt a stock. It's simple supply and demand. If the supply of shares increases and or the demand decreases at the same time, right, the supply is what pressures the stock. You need to have a commensurate increase in demand. And the, inc the demand for these shares is not increasing. More and more people are getting sick and tired of losing money in the stock and they get out and they don't get back in. Okay, so that's really what it comes down to. For now, so again, my belief is that this is a good stock to stay away from for the next month or so, and then we'll come back and revisit it. So I hope you learned something from this. Hope the information helped you out, and we'll be back uh, hopefully tomorrow with more information. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to provide you some maybe a sneak peek into some of the data we're getting out of Smith Micro. Probably not. Uh, you should really think about participating in that study because that's what's going to drive this stock going forward. When I run the math and let you know how much it looks like these guys are going to earn, um, you know, it's either going to move the stock up or down depending on the data that comes in. Just like what's happened here with MoviePass, the data came in, I crunched the numbers, said it was bearish, and the stock's been going down. That's what stock analysis is really about. You need to know what the company is worth. That's the job of a fundamentalist, and that's what determines where a stock ultimately goes. Uh, you traders, uh, you chart followers, you guys can make some good money on the short term, you know, on the movements of a stock, but the ultimate direction of the stock is determined by the fundamentals. And if you know that the fundamentals are good, then you can trade the stock with confidence, knowing that it's going to go up, up, up. And if you know that the fundamentals are negative, then you can make a lot of money trading the stock down, down, down. Okay? This is where the fundamentals lead 
and then the technicals can really make you that extra money. So again, that's enough for now. Uh, we'll catch you hopefully here.